early signing day is here we're gonna go top to bottom on this class see some changes additions subtractions we'll see i'm not good at math but we'll talk about that all here on locked on gators you are locked on gators your daily podcast on the florida gators part of the locked on podcast network your team every day Hello and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown Gators, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. Happy Wednesday. Happy early signing day. I'm Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with the whole nine sports giants country NFL 33. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. And right now, new customers, $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Uh, if you're part of the subtext groups, join subtext.com slash locked on Gators. And we've been talking about some rumors that may happen, some surprises that may happen today. Uh, we've been talking about that earlier this week. Shout out to David and Layla. Uh, love you both. Thank you very much. But now we're, we're talking about this Florida Gators 2024 recruiting class because things have gone wacky in recent weeks, whether it's been players leaving the class, rumors of players leaving the class, random nonsense about like DJ Lagway yesterday. I saw uh, sidelines USC. He was like, I, I'm hearing from a source that, that Lincoln Riley and USC Trojans have flipped DJ Lagway. No, you didn't, because that didn't happen, and it was never a real risk. Like we we could start with that. The top of the class, of DJ Lagway, Florida Gator, LJ McCray. I am expecting him to be a Florida Gator as well. Um, I know that th- there is, we'll say, valid, uh, va- valid reasoning to maybe be a little hesitant there. Uh, but that is not my expectation with LJ McCray. I'm fully expecting him to be a Florida Gator. And a big reason for that is I think that he's just been bought in with this team. Like we've talked about Auburn and Florida State in recent weeks. And look, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. And again, he can he can go to Auburn. I know that Auburn feels good. That is the truth. Um, Florida feels better. And personally... I feel better about that one. LJ McCray is committing at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So if you're watching this after that, he's already committed the schedule. Thanks to, uh, I think it was Connor Clark with All Gators. Yes, Connor Clark with All Gators. Schedule yesterday. Miles Graham reaffirmed his commitment to Florida. This morning, Noel Portniagan at 7.01 a.m. Teddy Foster at 8.30 with Fletcher Westfall at 8.30. Josiah Davis at 9 a.m. LJ McCray at 11 a.m. Marcus Maskell at 11.30, Mike Williams at noon, Amaris Williams is 1.40 p.m., TJ Abrams is 2.30, uh, Makai Boy Rowe is 3 p.m., DJ Lagway is 4.30 p.m., Isaiah Williams is 4 p.m., and Jare Hawkins is between 5 and 6 p.m. That's schedule there, so DJ Lagway, Florida Gator. LJ McCray, I'm fully expecting him to be a Florida Gator. I get it. Things did get rocky, especially early December, Fully expecting LJ McCurry to be a Florida Gator. I know Auburn feels good about him. Florida feels better. All right. That's that that's where we're gonna go on that one. And then when you go to the next part of the class, it's Amaris Williams, who that one I do think Auburn walks away with. Uh, I think that Amaris Williams really for a month or so, it's felt like Amaris Williams will not be a Florida Gator. I feel like it was maybe early November where we started kind of talking even here about Amaris Ohio State's pushing and he's he's liking what they're giving him what he's liking what they're telling him at least and so I do think Amaris Williams so I think Ohio State kind of put the wedge between Amaris Williams and the Florida Gators and then Auburn was like, we're just going to scoot John past you. And then they just completely held their doors open. Um, and I think that Amaris Williams will end up being an Auburn Tiger. 
when it's all said and done. It's, they've been trending that way for weeks now, ever since they really got into the conversation. They've been trending. Um, so if you go one for one when you're competing with Auburn and it's LJ McCray and Amaris Williams and you walk away with LJ McCray, I'm cool with it. Honestly, genuinely. Like, obviously, and maybe this is because we've expected Amaris to flip for so long. But I'm I'm fine walking away from this one. This one's been spotty for a long time. Um, and it's pretty clear he doesn't want to be a Florida Gator that bad based on his visits and what he's said on visits or after visits, uh, him tweeting the war damn eagle a ton. So unless this is the greatest troll job, he doesn't seem like he really wants to be a Florida Gator. And so I personally don't care too much if he's if he is a gator. Miles Graham, like I mentioned earlier. Yesterday, he had his uh, signing ceremony at Buholes where uh, Kendall Jackson, who was a Florida commit, and then a couple weeks ago, decommitted a couple days later, committed to Miami, and then yesterday tweeted out, hey, uh, I'm not going to commit to Miami. Well, first he tweeted, I'm not going to commit to Florida. And then he was like, oop, typo. I'm not going to commit to Miami. Uh, you'll find out at my signing ceremony. And then he went to Texas A&M where Sean Spencer Florida Gators' former D-line coach is now the D-line coach at Texas A&M. Um, I, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I said this in the subtext yesterday, early afternoon. I was told Kendall Jackson committed to Miami without telling the Miami staff, and it wasn't really a committable offer. Um, so that that's what I was told. That's why I feel like there's been a lot of craziness around that recruitment. But Miles Graham, linebacker, high school teammate for – this past season, because Miles Graham was in, uh, I believe he was in Georgia before, and now a Florida Gator going to be probably an early playing time Florida Gator as well. Moved to Buholz to so that he would be in Gainesville already. So Miles Graham, Florida Gator, he reaffirmed that yesterday at that signing ceremony. Fletcher Westfall is the next one. He is your fifth highest rated player in this class uh, from Tuscarora in Leesburg, Virginia. Family moved to Tampa because he committed to Florida. And so they'd be closer so they can go to more games. I think you're, I think I'm pretty comfortable going, yeah, this one is one of those rare times where we go, he's a lock. Nothing's going to change with that, especially when you look at what Fletcher can do. He's going to be an early enrollee. He is already a giant human being. And getting that early uh, early reps with the coaching staff and getting into this offense earlier, he might have to play early next year. Not even because of, oh, he's so amazing or the other guys stink. There's not much depth in that tackle room right now. So it's very possible that we're one injury away from Fletcher Westfall needing to play next year. So getting him in as early as possible is huge. He committed uh, mid-July, I think it was, and has been just a rock-solid commit ever since. And again, he, Fletcher Westfall is the one where we were like, oh, I feel like he's going to go to Clemson. And and everybody was... There were a couple of spots for Fletcher Westfall, and pretty much none of them were, oh, he's going to be a Gator. And then he commits, he comes on this show, and he was just like, yeah, no, I, I've I've known, told them a few days ago um, that, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a Gator. And that was just a, a wild time. And think about if he didn't commit to Florida, man, the highest rated offensive tackle would be way down the board, which I'm happy with those guys. But again, I need a blue chip guy. And so you get it with Fletcher Westfall. You're going to be happy with that. We'll look at the rest of this class. We've gone through the top five. We've got 14 names left that we'll talk about, including Adarius Hayes and what I think is going to happen with him. Uh, also, Kane Daniels finally getting some respect. Before we talk about the rest of that class, today's episode of Lockdown Gators is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get 150 Dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar money line bet. That's a hundred and fifty bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. Ja Morant is back. There's no better time to get in on the action. The app's super easy to use, especially during bowl season. You got games every day. Um, some games just don't touch, especially with the opt-outs and everything, but some of them are pretty easy money. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. And remember that FanDuel is an official partner 
of the NFL. Thanks again for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Looking at the rest of this class, Aaron Childs at linebacker, another one with Miles Graham, going to be a Gator. Just uh, There's been very little, if any, doubt about Aaron Childs. I don't think anyone's even questioned that. He was one from that big stretch in the middle of June where it was uh, Amaris, Aaron Childs, Amir Jackson, uh, Dre Hawkins was like a week later. Uh, Mike Williams is before that stretch. Marcus Maskell, Jama- uh, Jamonta Waller. And of course you lost the two highest rated guys from that. Amaris Williams likely gone. And, uh, and Jamonta Waller, you also lost. And remember Amaris is committing at 1140 PM Eastern time. So if you're listening to this before then he's still technically in the class, but fully expecting him to be gone. Similar to Xavier Filsame, who we were like, all right, Fully expect him to be gone. Aaron Childs, I'm I'm happy with what he could bring to the table. And I'm going to skip over Amir Jackson because I've been going down the 24-7 list here to get to a Darius Hayes real quick because it's very relevant. But I am currently, presently, at the time of recording this late Tuesday night, expecting a Darius Hayes to flip to Miami. Um, it's just been a really weird recruitment It's as simple as that, where he committed pretty early in the cycle relative to everyone else. He committed uh, late December or or January-ish, January. So he committed in January, and then he was, a few months later, he was like, oh no, like I'm I'm shutting down my recruitment. Two days later, he was like, I didn't mean that. I just meant that, you know, I'm a Gator, but I'm going to take visits. And then he, I believe, shut it down again, and then he went on more visits, and, and the damning thing for me is that last week on the last day of the contact period where coaches could go make visits, in-home visits, Darius Hayes had a scheduled visit with the Florida Gators coaching staff. He canceled that visit so that he can go on a visit to Miami. I feel like that's just, I feel like that was basically the flip itself, if you're being honest. Just if I'm thinking about this, if I'm the coaching staff, I'm like, okay, then then have fun with Miami. I'm not going to consider you a part of this class. Um, mostly because you you canceled a Florida visit where they were going to you so that you can go to Coral Gables. And for me, that's that's just I feel like that's a bad look, even if he is in the class. Just because that's not one of those things where it's like, oh, we were making everybody think he's going to be a hurricane. And then he went to like, you, you, you punk your coaching staff. Like it would have been different if you had them visit you on Thursday and then you went to Miami the next day. That, that could have been different, but this is just, you canceled on them to hang out with. I mean, I mean, you, you canceled on your girl to go hang with the side chick. And then it was very public that you did that. And then now, now your girlfriend kind of looks stupid if she takes you back, right? That's how I'm equating it. Um, that that is what I'm going to equate it to. So I think Darius Hayes is gone. I'm not super upset about it. Nothing about the whole like I know so many people are like I don't care about the, the TikTok stuff. Um, I'm mostly looking at it as if we're gonna lose a linebacker, I'd rather it be a Darius Hayes because the coaching staff plans on using him as planned on using him as an off-ball linebacker, and I've said since he committed i think he's best suited to play along the edge so i'm fine with with that departure i'm not going to be too mad about it It hurts the recruiting class rankings i'm not going to be too mad about it uh amir jackson at tight end who is ranked in between aaron childs and darius hayes i really like what amir jackson can bring to the table i think he's planning on being an early enrollee i'm not planning on him being much of a contributor next year unless injuries pile up or unless he just performs way better than anticipated uh, and it's not a knock on him at all. It's genuinely just tight ends a hard position to play early. I mean, even when you go from college to the NFL, there's a big gap there, especially when you look at blocking. He played a bit more of like a split out wide or like how Kyle Pitts was used with Dan Mullen. That's what Amir Jackson did a lot of. And simply put, that's not how Billy Napier uses his tight ends, really. So I don't think Amir Jackson is going to play early for those reasons. I think he's going to bulk up a little bit and get more because he's 6'4", 223. So I think that he's got some room to, to just beef up to the SEC level. Um, and then we can talk about playing early there, but I, I'm not confident 
that he's got the skill set or just functional strength to play in line day one. And if you can't play in line day one, then you can't play period uh, day one, not just in the, you're not going to play. If you're tight end, you can't punch in. You're not going to be able to do it. Uh, the running back Kanan Daniels is someone that I've, I've said I'm a massive fan of. I know he got a bump on the recruiting rankings. He needs to be higher. Like I'm telling you, this is an sec runner and it's so clear. And honestly, I, I do think he's one of the players that can play early. He's got the vision already. And for me, I'm like, that's the biggest thing to translate to the college level is if your vision holds up, you can find success. Might might not have the top flight speed to go off on these 80 yard runs and everything. But if you can pick up just consistent yardage, you've got to roll. It's as simple as that. But then you have the next three players, all wide receivers. Jure Hawkins, Tawaski Abrams, Isaiah Williams. Dre Hawkins, since he's committed, has been a Gator. Like there hasn't even been real rumors about anything. Um, so Dre Hawkins, Gator. TJ Abrams, you took him from Florida State. Gator. Like, like ever since he's committed to Florida, there's not been rumors of him flipping. There's not been anything that's been, oh, is TJ Abrams going to leave the Florida Gators? Is he going to leave the class and flip anywhere? Hasn't been an issue or even a concern at all. Isaiah Williams, wide receiver from Carol Wood Day, he went on a visit this past weekend to Texas A&M. It was kind of a surprise visit, but again, Texas A&M has a whole new coaching staff, so it makes sense to go, oh, all of a sudden we're in on this kid. They tried getting in on DJ Lagway, and DJ Lagway essentially left them on red. But Isaiah Williams is someone that took this visit to Texas A&M and I truly believe he just took the visit as I'm just taking the visit. Like, that's it. Like, he was just like, I'm going to take advantage of the visit while I can and enjoy it. I, I know that Texas A&M is trying to get him. I don't think it happens. Genuinely, I think he's going to be a Florida Gator when it's all said and done. That is my expectation for Isaiah Williams. Uh, I mean, look, when he committed, he was coming off an injury and the coaching staff took him as someone that committed while he was coming off an injury and there were question marks about how he uh, kind of rebound and bounce back. I see no reason why he would flip and why he would leave the coaching staff that stayed by him. So for me, fully expecting Isaiah Williams to be a Gator, uh, Josiah Davis at safety Gator. I know that when Corey Raymond left, he seemed pretty shaken up and then immediately went back on his word. Um, Cause at first he was like, ah, I'm, I'm my recruitment's open. And then he was like, you know what? Never mind. I'll take it back. Um, so I'm assuming Billy Napier gave him a quick call at that point, or Austin Armstrong probably with safeties, especially Mike Williams, offensive tackle Gator, uh, Brian Taylor from Blinn college, the Juco kid D line edge going to be a Gator. Obviously just committed like last week. So wouldn't expect any difference there. Teddy Foster is a big one, six two, one seventy 170 at corner, very raw, but like the physical tools are there to work early. And I think Teddy Foster can find that playing time. And I, I think that he's going to remain a Florida Gator again. Florida, I mean, he's not even on 24-7 composite. He's not even nationally ranked. 91st player in the state. Like, this isn't some some five-star kid where it's like, oh, there's a big change. That This is someone who Florida went out and sought after and brought in. And I think that goes a long way with a high school kid. And it's like, oh. I'm a Florida fan. They were the first big power five school to offer me. That means a lot. And so I fully expect Teddy Foster to be a Florida Gator, especially when he was the one who was like, oh yeah, like coach told me who they're bringing in a DB coach, an NFL guy, like really nice guy. Like I'm looking forward to meeting him and getting to know him. I doubt that it would go poorly that quickly. Mackay Boy Road, defensive lineman, Florida, lost him, had him, lost him, got him back. Marcus Maskell, offensive tackle, Gator. Noel Portniagen, interior offensive lineman from Germany, Gator. Um, and again, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering his last name. I will find out when he's on the pronunciation list, when he's on the live active roster for the Florida Gators. Before we talk about some additions to this class, where I do think Florida has a realistic chance of adding, I'll say three guys tomorrow. I, I think it's very, again, just a chance to add three guys to their recruiting class. Before we talk about that, we will get there in just a second. 
Today's episode of Lockdown Gators is brought to you by LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business or SEC program, specifically along the defensive line, or as a strength and conditioning coach, Billy, just saying, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And LinkedIn isn't just another stupid job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates and so easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hell, they even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker because we know that small business folk, you don't have a ton of time and resources. You're a small business. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks again for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. And like I mentioned, I do think that there's a realistic chance that Florida adds, I'll say, three guys to this class today. The first one that I'm going to talk about is Jaden Ball, because I do think Jaden Ball is one where you kind of have to have the conversation because it's been for a few months now, Florida or Arkansas, when he was an Arkansas commit, he decommitted on Monday evening, but it was Florida or Arkansas. And then the past two weeks has been Florida or Alabama. And we talked about this a bit with Brian Smith yesterday. For me, I think Florida is a favorite. Both schools feel pretty confident about where they stand with Jaden Ball, and rightfully so because it seems like he's genuinely torn between where he wants to go. So makes complete sense that both schools feel good because he hasn't really been able to definitively say no to anybody. So I I think both schools feel good, or I know both schools feel good. I think he winds up being a Florida Gator mostly because of how long Florida has been building that relationship. Uh, Kevin Riley going from Miami to Alabama. I think that if you're Florida, you play off that immediately. I think if you're Florida, you go, look, they just added a guy that while they're trying to add you, I don't care if they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight M's in their bank account or running backs in their 2024 commit class. If I'm Florida, I'm looking at them and I'm saying, look, Jade, Bama just added another running back. Like, you weren't even the only guy they were pursuing right now. Jaden Ball, you are the only guy Florida's pursuing right now. They were pursuing Jared Gibson. He shut it down. So Jaden Ball is the only running back Florida's really pursuing. I think you got that selling point of we didn't just add more running backs just to add more running backs. We've been pursuing you for months, and that's the key, the months part, the relationship part. Jaden Ball has been recruited for a few months again. I think it was September or early October where they offered him initially um, or where Florida staff really got involved in, uh, in his recruitment because they offered him technically a while ago. Um, but that's where they really started pushing for him. He went on campus. He got offered April 8th, 2023 specifically, but he went on campus to Gainesville for the uh, Arkansas game. He was there for that one. And I feel like for if you're Florida, you just go, we've been here for months. This isn't just some, I mean, Bama offered him that same weekend that he was in Gainesville. You use the relationship. We talk all the time about, oh, recruiting, so recruiting is about relationships. This is one of the times where Florida gets to go, We've had that standing relationship with you for months where we've been pursuing you for months. They just really started pushing in three weeks ago, offered him, yeah, a month and a half ago, but just really started pushing and and gaining some traction a few weeks ago. If you're Florida, that has to be your selling point. And I honestly, I do think that's going to be enough of a selling point for Jaden Baugh to be a Gator. I, I, I get it that you have to look at Oh, well, look at who Bama gets to the NFL and all that. Yeah, that's a valid point. But when we talk about it's about relationships, then then we're going to be looking at 
that relationship and it's Florida that's been there much longer than Alabama. In the secondary, Gregory Smith is uh, a safety or going to be playing safety. He's committing at 1.15 p.m. today. Uh, he is someone where, for Florida, you've got the major leg up on him. 6'4", 200 pounds, and he's someone who, well, guess what? You're you're the school recruiting him. Ole Miss is in there, I believe. Uh, it's Vanderbilt, Virginia Tech, I think, Toledo, and uh, South Florida. And I think that's the top six. But Florida's the one that have been recruiting him, that have the plan. And that's the big selling point with someone like Gregory Smith because he was a QB receiver. He was truly just an athlete. He just played wherever the team needed him to play. And so him being that kind of versatile player has not stunted him, but he's going to be playing a brand new spot full time. And that's where his ranking is low. That's why his ranking is low. He's a pure project player. But Florida's had that vision for him. And again, he's a safety. So Corey Raymond leaving does not impact Gregory Smith that much because Austin Armstrong coached safeties last year. So that's not a huge concern, I think. I'm I'm sure it played, again, a, a bit of a part in it. But for the most part, I don't think it did too much against him or against Florida with him again because Austin Armstrong was the guy that was recruiting him primarily to begin with and he just held out on that um again Gregory Smith is someone who was supposed to commit last week the rumor was he was going to push it back and then it was reported that he wasn't going to push it back and then he did push it back um but I, I do feel like that was just a miscommunication somewhere along the way because it was just one report that said that he was not going to push it back. But Gregory Smith, I think, winds up a Gator. And the last one that I wanted to save the best for last year, because I think it's uh, I think it's relevant to, is Zay Mincy from Mainland. Uh, teammates with LJ McRae, who again, I think LJ will be a Florida Gator. Zay Mincy has been someone that Florida's been recruiting for a long time, 6'3", 180. Unless plans have changed with Will Harris, do not view Zay Mincy as someone who will replace Xavier Filsini. Okay? Because you look at what Florida's been telling Zay Mincy and what they've been pursuing him as, what they've been recruiting him as, it's a corner, not safety. So don't don't look at Zay Mincy as someone who's going to replace Xavier Filsini, but I will tell you that Earlier this week, I sent a message to the subtext chat, and I was like, yeah, I, I think he's going to end up a cane. And then yesterday, I sent the message out to the subtext, and I was just like, hey, Florida's Florida feels a bit better about things, and Florida's Florida feels like they've made some progress with him. And I do believe that's true. And, I mean, right now he's the 55th national player on the 24-7 composite. I think he winds up a Florida get. I think having LJ McCray, I think he winds up, Florida Gator or Miami Hurricane. I don't think he's going to Bama. I don't think he's going to Florida State. I think it's Florida or Miami. But I think having LJ McCray is a big selling point there if you're Florida. Because he can be recruiting him just nonstop before actually making the decision and signing. So I think Zay Mincy is a name to look out for as someone who's going to make a decision. Uh, but again, like like Zay and Jaden, not happy. Zay said, I believe it was Zay that said he's going to sign today but not announce his decision until January 6th at the uh, All-American Bowl, I believe it is. So some of these won't come out today. Florida will continue to pursue guys before I'm looking at someone like Jason Mitchell II. Um, Florida will continue to pursue guys before a national signing day because this is an early signing day, but most of the class will be signed today. And if you're Florida, I think if you can get most of those guys signed, you feel pretty good about how things are looking for you. Um, we will be back tomorrow. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day, every day, maybe later today. But at the very latest, we'll be back tomorrow to talk more Florida Gators and probably focus a bit more on the transfer portal now that high school recruiting will be signed. For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Whole Nine Sports, Giants Country, NFL 33, and I'll see you all tomorrow.